Sure, again, uh, as always, appreciate you guys coming out. Um, thanks for joining us. You know, have had a chance to, to obviously watch the film from Northwestern uh, you know, on Sunday with uh, the staff, obviously the players. A few things stand out. Um, it's not a magic uh, button to push. You know, if you look at how we've played the last couple of games uh, on offense, the turnovers, uh, we've lost a turnover battle. Um, we're not getting them on the defensive side of the ball, on the offensive side of the ball. We're committing them. And then uh, the next part of it is the explosive plays. Uh, though we had some explosive plays uh, on the offensive side of the ball, we didn't have enough. And then defensively, we gave up some explosives. Um, I think when you look at uh, game-changing uh, plays, I would say that goal line stand against Northwestern kind of changed the complexity of the game for us because to get down inside the, the three-yard line and come away with no points and then have the defense uh, give up a 99-yard drive uh, were the type of momentum plays that have kind of plagued us the last couple of games. Um, and for us, we've got to find a way to get back to that explosiveness on the offensive side of the ball and then on defense. Um, you know, probably was the worst tackling game we had this season. Uh, we had 16 missed tackles, which, you know, we tracked during the course of the year, and that was the most uh, going into um, coming out of a game. Um, but I was proud of the way our defense responded in the second half. If you looked at the fourth quarter and when we needed to get stops to get the ball back to the offense, we were able to get the necessary stops on defense, which was one of the bright spots for us. Um, offensively, being able to go down, score to pull us within six um, was huge. And then we got the, the, the defensive three and out. Uh, we preserved a lot of time there for us to, to run our two-minute offense. And we came up short down there with the interception. Um, losing back-to-back -back games by one score uh, is disappointing. Um, we're a team that, you know, we talked about being ready to compete for championships, but obviously uh, we're, we're just not there yet. Um, but that won't stop us from continuing to do the necessary work to get us to that point. Um, you know, we got Penn State coming into the shell this week, uh, a team that has all of our attention. Um, they're a top 10 team, uh, one of the more talented teams in the country. Uh, you know, I look at this week as a great opportunity for us here at home. Um, they've got quite a few guys on their roster from our area. Uh, we've got only a couple from their area. Uh, very familiar with their program. They're very familiar with us. Um, obviously, their 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 defense is one of those uh, top tier defenses. They play a lot of man coverage, which we have to be able to defeat man coverage this week. Their front seven is one of the best ones we faced or will face uh, this year. When you look at them on offense, it starts with the run game, which a year ago, I think they rushed for over 250 yards. So I would imagine that they're going to try to establish the run. Um, our goal will be to, to take the run away on the defensive side of the ball. And how do you do it? You know, if you look at the way we've played Penn State, when we've been able to have success, it's been being very aggressive um, in terms of lining guys up, attacking the line of scrimmage. And, and forcing them to throw the ball to beat us. And that's what we'll, we'll try to do this, this upcoming week. Um, their quarterback is playing at a high level. Um, you know, he made a big throw there last week in, in a critical situation, so he's very capable. Um, but like always, it's going to be more about what we do, how we prepare, and how we execute than it will be our opponent. Um, we need to try to block out as much of the outside noise that we can. Um, but we're not going to shy away from having expectations here at Maryland for our football program, and, and we embrace it. It's something that um, you know we've got to do our part, and, and it starts with me leading the program, and then everybody within the program being the best version of themselves going into the game, and then performing at a high level during the game. Um, our captains this week are uh, Jay Sean Jones, Dante Trader. Oh, Corey Bullock uh, will be our three game captains for, for this week. So with that, I'll open it up for questions. Good afternoon, Mike. Dave, what's up? Nothing much. Happy Halloween. We're going to talk about Halloween. the candy tax later. Is it progressive? Is it a flat tax? Uh, you know, is a different state and, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, <laughs> about the game Saturday, uh, Penn State brings a pass rush into College Park that leads the Big Ten in sacks. Uh, they're also number one at getting off the field on third down. They've got, what, Adisa Isaac, who's been a beast. What, what's the biggest challenge that they will pose 
your front five that's looking to bounce back from giving up six sacks at Northwestern? I mean, they're a fast defense. And, you know, when you look at the six sacks in a Northwestern game and, and O-line coaches cringe when you hear six, but I would say we gave up three sacks. Uh, three of the sacks were scrambles where the quarterback has to throw the ball away and not just run out of bounds or get tackled for a loss. There are opportunities to get rid of the ball, but we did give up three sacks where we turned guys loose. And I can tell you with the type of pressure that they play and run on defense, it's going to be important that we're really sound on our assignments. Um, they try to give you a lot of looks. Uh, they put a lot of guys up at the line of scrimmage, and we're going to have a bunch of one-on-one -on -one battles that we're going to have to compete. Um, but we also can help. If you look the last few weeks, we, we've run a lot of screens, which are kind of the, the antivirus for, for pressure. Um, and we've hit a couple, and we've kind of become a little efficient there. But we've got to do a lot of different things on offense to slow down their rush. I mean, they're very talented front seven athletic 50% of the snaps are some form of pressure and they play man coverage and so to me those are the challenges on defense uh, we've got good players on our side of the ball that we've got to get to play to the best of their ability and we've got to win some of these one-on-one -on -one matchups whether it's in protection or whether it's in coverage hey Mike in addition to telling us that after the North Northwestern game that you wanted to evaluate everything from top to bottom you mentioned players need to make plays how much is that being reinforced to the stars, particularly guys like Talia, you know, two turnovers, tie with a drop, some deep primary defenders, missed tackles, that kind of thing? Yeah, that's the great thing about this team, Gene, is that uh, they, they, they're they all in. They bought into the accountability piece, and it starts with modeling at the top. I mean, uh, it's my responsibility to have us ready to play. Um, I didn't think the last couple of games we came out with the mentality that we need to. You know, it's a little different uh, program now because, you know, Maryland is now a team that gets hunted uh, before we show up and people say, oh, it's Maryland. And, and maybe they approach the game with the mentality of it's just Maryland. But right now, I don't think very many people, when we show up, say, hey, it's just Maryland. And so what our team has to do and when we take this next step to become a championship type program is we've got to be able to learn how to play when you are the favorite, when you are expected to win. And those expectations are ones we're not going to shy away from. Following that, we've heard the cliche that losing can be contagious. What do you do in practice to kind of make sure that doesn't you know, translate to next week and You know what, it, it, we, we, we always are defined by the present. We're not defined in what's happened in the past, and we can't look too far forward. And right now, it's about Penn State. It's about this game. Uh, the last three or four games have no bearing on this one other than for us to evaluate what we're doing as we have. And as I said, there's no uh, – When I, I've said this a lot in here. Our winning formula is winning the explosive play battle and winning the turnover battle. The last two games we haven't done that. We've lost by one score, and, and, and it's up to us as a coaching staff to put us in position to make those plays uh, and have the right guys in there, and it's up to the players to, to make the plays. And each and every one of us have accepted that responsibility and the accountability that goes along with it. Hey, Coach. Varun, what's up? You talked about how at the before the season you guys had these goals of Big Ten championships. Mm -hmm. Uh, and now you say that you're not ready. When you look at the team from the beginning of the season to now, what is the biggest difference that leads to that change in evaluation? Well, I said we're going ready to compete for Big Ten championships. Okay. So let's make sure we put the okay. whole quote in. And we're still ready to compete for Big Ten championships. Just right now, uh, we've shown the last couple of weeks that we're just not there yet. And how do I evaluate it? By the scoreboard. That's why they keep score. We've lost the last two um, to teams that going into it, uh, teams that are in the Big Ten, that we, we need to be able to compete and win those games. We didn't do it this week, the last couple of weeks. And you've talked a lot about the player-led leadership on this team in this you know, tough stretch. Where have you seen it the most and who have you seen it from the most? Uh, by the how they show up and work. Um, you know, after the game Saturday, I met Sunday with a bunch of our leaders. Uh, I had a leadership meeting yesterday before practice to, to gauge where we, we, where we are. And I can tell you the same way that we felt as coaches after that game is the same way our players felt that, again, we let another game slip away that it, it really came down to what we did more than anything. And so to take the accountability, we've got to do us better. We've got to do the things we do better um, and more consistently. And that's where me as the leader have to, has to get us playing and doing those things more consistently. 
Um, Coach, you talked a little bit about Drew Aller. He's only got one interception all season as a, as a sophomore. Just how impressive is that for, for yeah, a quarterback? Protecting to be? the ball is really important at that position because of how much they, they're exposed to, to it. And, you know, he's taking care of the football. Uh, they've run the ball efficiently for the most part. They've got two big time running backs. Both those guys are really talented. Probably one of the better O line in the country. So, um, yeah, as a, a quarterback, when you protect the ball the way he has and, and has managed and done the things to put him in this position, he's playing at a really high level. Hey, Coach. Brandon, what's up? Tyrese Chambers left the team last week. What was the reasoning behind that? You know, they're all personal reasons. You know, Tyrese is one of those great kids that joined our program, um, you know, for a year. He left for personal reasons. He has a few things going on in his life that he felt he needs to take care of. We're in true, full support of him. Uh, still in school, finishing up classes. Uh, you know, still has access to the academic stuff that we do for him. But um, as with anything, when guys leave the program, everyone leaves for whatever their own personal reasons. And we'll support Tyrese as he continues to move forward. Hey, Coach. Taylor, what's up? What's up? Um, after the game on Saturday, talking about penalties, specifically after the whistle, you said, I got to get that fixed. There was a moment earlier this year, Antoine Littleton, I think it was an unsportsmanlike conduct, and you benched him for the rest of the game. Is that form of discipline something we could start to see more of moving forward? It's something that I evaluate, and just like, uh, you know, you, you probably you don't have kids yet, right? You know, you, 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 you raise each kid a little, you got to figure out who the kid is, and then you figure out the punishment, but there's no cookie cutter. So I'm not going to let you box me into saying, is that what you expect? Uh, it depends on the game, depends on the, the type of penalty, what happened. I try to evaluate it all, but I try not to be as emotional in making these decisions. But, you know, we're fifth, I think, in the Big Ten in penalties. Uh, I thought this past Saturday, you know, those unsportsmanlike are the ones that really get under my skin because they're about having discipline and, and not being emotional. And most of the time, it's the second guy responding more than it is the first. And we've got to be a team that understands, take care of those things within the whistle and not after the whistle. Hey, Coach, with hey, uh, James Franklin, he's obviously, you guys coached together for a while. What stands out to you most about him and what's your guys' relationship like now? Well, uh, we have a great working relationship and we see each other when we see each other you know we don't text Merry Christmas to each other um, he's a head coach in the Big Ten we see each other when we do Big Ten things and type of relationship with that I don't know what you want me to say okay Mike correct me if I'm wrong here but 2014 Maryland beat Penn State I think you were the OC at the time what do you remember from that game and <laughs> do you see any parallels <laughs> Uh, what do I remember from that? I remember that we didn't shake hands at the beginning of the game, and it's not sportsmanlike to do that. And um, it was a tough game. Uh, I think we had the winning field goal, kicked the winning field goal there at the end up there. Is that the game you're talking about? Is that 2014? Yeah. Um, just, that's the piece I remember more than anything is that what happened before the game, which won't happen before this game. Um, not, um, I guess is like what has been like the biggest thing you notice? I guess the team has struggled with the past three games. I don't know if it's been the same or different things, different games. Yeah, no, great question. Um, we've struggled one with winning the turnover battle. We've lost that in both the last two, three games. Um, the explosive plays, you know, those are runs of you know, 10 or more passes of 15 yards or more considered explosives for us on the offensive side of the ball. And to me, that's been probably the two biggest things that jump out. Um, you know, both these games have been one score games where we've had opportunities uh, to win the game on the field. And, and, you know, whether it's on offense or whether it's on defense, getting off the field and getting the ball back. And we just haven't made the plays. And, and to me, that's the, the part where as a head coach, when I talk about evaluating everything, we need to evaluate what we're doing, how we're doing it, and uh, if we got the right people out there doing those things. And that's what you know we will continue to do. Um, but there's no really magic formula to it. It's just a matter of uh, those two things are, are what helps us win is when we take care of the football and on defense when we create turnovers. You know, I always I said this to our staff the other day. Um, you know, we're one of those offenses that it's, if you're using a basketball analogy, we need 30 shots 
to get 20 or more points. And we're one of those type of offenses where when our defense gets us the ball and we steal series, we usually are able to, to, to create the type of explosive offense and explosive plays that we, we will need to win. And uh, we haven't gotten those turnovers, and then we've turned it over, so it's limited us. And then you look at this past week's game to have two 90-plus drives uh, where they're time consuming and, and the way the clock is working, it shrinks the game, which puts more pressure for us to have to score and not waste series, which we had a few wasted series on uh, Saturday at Northwestern. Coach, what would you have to see from your offensive line and your running backs maybe early in the game to maybe lean more on your running game this week, this Saturday? Yeah, good question. I mean, leaning on the run game, I mean, I, I don't feel we abandoned the run uh, this past weekend. I think, again, when I always talk about balance, it's doing what our uh, what our offense or de- it, it, what the defense shows us. You know, we're an offense that likes to attack, and so based on what we get, it tells us whether to run or throw, if they have numbers in the box, if it's RPOs that we have attached to it. Um, I can tell you that when you're down two scores, uh, running the ball is, you know, you pick and choose your spots there, especially with the way the clock works now. Um, and so I thought being down two scores in the second half of the Northwestern game kind of dictated that we throw the ball a little bit more, but I don't feel like we've abandoned the run. So, you know, we go into every game with a great run game plan and a great passing game plan. And then based on what the defense is doing, uh, kind of dictates a little bit of what we can get executed. Mike, I know you don't want to give away your game plan or anything, but what sort of candy will be handed out uh, this evening at the Loxley household for those who might just happen to randomly be by? And is there an age limit for trick-or-treaters? Will yeah. you be wearing a costume while handing out said candy? Yeah, well, no. I One, I won't be home for it. Um, you know, I've my wife's not allowing me home. I have to stay here. She's unhappy with the way the last three weeks have gone. Um, and so I'll be working through trick-or-treating. Um, I don't expect many people to come by my office looking for any candy. Um, I do have Starburst in my little cup on my desk, as Varun knows, because we have a lot of individual uh, one-offs. Um, but yeah, not a lot of people want to come see me uh, this week. I don't have a lot of friends. <laughs> Thank you, Coach. All right, guys. Appreciate it.